Solving a system of linear equations using an augmented matrix. So behind me I have a system of linear equations. Okay? We know that we can solve these using elimination or substitution, but what we're going to talk about now is how we can do this with a matrix. Okay? So the first thing is taking this information and putting it into matrix form. Okay? And how we do that is basically by taking each element of our linear equation, each coefficient, and throwing it into its own space in a matrix. So we have our 3 on our x, our negative 2, and then our 13. Same thing for the second equation, 4, negative 1, negative 1. And typically a dotted or solid line is drawn down the middle to separate our variables from our answers. Okay? And really what this is representing is this first column is our x values, our second is our y's, and our third is our answer. Okay, so taking this information and just translating it into a matrix form. Now, what we have to remember is we are, this is just a system of equations. So anything we can do to an equation, we can also do to this matrix. And those are called row operations, how we can manipulate these rows. Okay, so the first row operation we can do is to switch the order of the rows. Thinking about our equations right here, it doesn't matter which one I put first, it's the same system. Okay, so one row operation we could do is to switch our rows. The second equation becomes first and the first equation goes to the second. And again the dotted line to switch it. Okay, going back to our equations, we could just as easily say that this equation we can multiply by 2, right? So this we could say well, let's multiply this by 2 and then this becomes 6x minus 4y is equal to 26. That's still the same equation as long as we distribute that 2 all the way through. We can do the same thing with matrices and it's called a scalar multiple. Okay, you can use a scalar multiple. Basically I could say, okay, let's multiply this by 2. That top equation then becomes 8, negative 2, negative 2. The bottom equation stays the same. 3, negative 2, 13. Okay. The last row operation we can do is adding and subtracting rows together. Okay. We did this in elimination. If we go back over here, let's ignore that 2 that we multiplied by. We can try to get rid of a variable. Okay. Typically we would try to line it up so our x's or our y's canceled, but that was just a special case in solving it. What we could do is we could say, okay, let's just add these two equations together and see what we come up with. We can do the same thing with matrices as well. Okay? And typically how I at least designate that and how your teacher does it might be different is just to say, okay, next to row two, just say like, okay, let's add row one. Okay? And so what that would tell me is that my, let's go over here, first row stays the same, eight, negative two, negative two, and then my bottom row, I'm adding the corresponding component from the first row. So here I have 3, I'd just be adding 8. Here I have negative 2, adding negative 2, becomes negative 4. And lastly, 13 plus negative 2 is 11. So this tells me that I am just adding these two rows together. I could just as easily said, okay, let's ignore this, and I could say, okay, let's subtract 2 times row 1. And that would tell me that I would need to multiply row 1 by 2 and subtract it. Because this is just a, again, a scalar multiple of something. You can always multiply by a constant. So in recap, we took our equation, system of equations, and turned it into a matrix. And then from there, there's a number of matrix, number of matrix operations we can use. They're called row operations. We can switch the order of our rows. We can multiply by a scalar or we can add rows together or add multiples of rows as well.